In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you write fractions in simplest form. Now, when changing fractions to simplest form, you need to ask yourself, how low can I go? Okay, now, and you want to write this down in your notes, in order to find the fraction in simplest form or reduce fractions to simplest form, what you need to do first of all is divide the numerator and the denominator by the GCF or the greatest common factor. Okay, so you need to find the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator and then after you do that you divide by the greatest common factor to both numerator and denominator and you will have your fraction in simplest form or reduce the simplest form. For example, we have 12 twentieths, so the greatest common factor of 12 twentieths is 4. And then after we found the greatest common factor, we divide that 4 by both the numerator and the denominator, and then we have 3 fifths. Now, let's think about what if you don't pick the GCF the first time. You do not need to worry about it too much, but the only problem with that is you will not be 100% certain that, certain that it is reduced to simplest terms. Okay, what you need to do is just keep dividing the num numerator and denominator until the fraction is as low as it can go. So what we will do right now, what I'm going to do for you, I just want you to listen. I'm going to show you how to reduce fractions to simplest terms. The first thing you need to do is find the GCF. So I'm going to find the GCF of 9 and 21, greatest common factor of 9 and 21. First of all, I know 1 times 9 gives me 9. I need to list the factors first. And then 3 is also another factor. And that's it. Okay. 1 and 21, and I know we've gone over this already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on finding the GCF. 1 and 21, 3 and 7. And those are all the factors of 21. Now what I will do is find the common factors, 1 and 1, 3 and 3. I do not have any other common factors, so my GCF is 3. Okay, now that I have my GCF of being 3, what I can do is divide both numer numerator and denominator by 3. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3. And 21 divided by 3 gives me 7. Now I know for sure, without any doubt at all, that that 9, 20, first is reduced to simplest terms because I divided by the GCF. If I were just to pick a random number and divide them, the numerator and denominator, I would not know for sure it's in simplest form or simplest terms. So it's always important to find the GCF first and then divide by the GCF. So what I want you to do now is get out a pencil and your math journal and I want you to do these few problems with me. First of all, we're going to find the greatest common factor of 12 and 30. Okay, so first of all, we'll write 12, and then we're going to write 30. Okay, we're going to find the GCF factors of 12. 1 times 12 gives me 12. Even think about your divisibility rules when you're doing this. 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Those are all the factors of 12. Okay, 30, we always start out with 1 and the number itself. Then 2 goes into 30, or 2 times 15 equals 30. To 30. 3 and 10. And then 5 and 6. Now from here, we're going to find the greatest common factor. We can circle the common factors, 1 and 1, 2 and 2. 3 and 3, 4 is not common, 6 and 6 are common, 12 is not common, and the GCF is going to be 6. Now that I've found my GCF, what I'm going to do is divide the GCF by both the numerator and denominator. So we divide that 6, I'm sorry, that 12 divided by 6. 30 divided by 6, 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. 30 divided by 6 gives me 5 for 2 fifths. And that is my fraction in simplest terms. Now, if I were to divide this by 2, let's say, for example, I just picked a random number, 12 thirtieths divided by 2, that gives me 6 fifteenths. 
that's still not in simplest terms. I would have to do another step, but if you find the greatest common factor, it may take a little bit of time to find the GCF, but you know for sure that you will have the correct answer. So it's always important to find the GCF first. Now I want you to follow along again and continue to do this problem with me in your math journal. So we're going to find the GCF 7 and 42. Okay, factors of 7 will be 1 and 7, and that's it. Factors of 42, 1 times 42. And it's really, really important that you understand those divisibility rules. It'll help you out with a lot of different concepts. 2 and 21, 3 and 14. 4 does not go into 42. 5 does not go into 42, 6 and 7 go into 42, or 6 times 7. So those are all our factors of 7 and 42. Now we're going to find the GCF 1 and 1, and then 7 and 7. The GCF is 7. So we're going to divide our numerator by 7, our denominator by 7. 7 divided by 7 does give me 1. 42 divided by 7 does give me 6. So 1 6 is 7 40 seconds reduced to simplest terms. Okay, we're going to find this 12 54 so we're going to reduce that to simplest terms. Find the GCF first, greatest common factor, 12 and 54. If you need a review on greatest common factor, we're doing it here, or you could even watch the previous video on greatest common factor. First of all, 1 and 12, we're going to list all the factors first, 2 and 6, and then finally 3 and 4, all the factors of 12, 54, 1 and 54. I know 2 goes into 54 because 54 is an even number, it's going to go 27 times. I know 3 goes into 54 because the sum of the digits equals 9, which is divisible by 3. 3 times 18 is 54. Okay, I know that 4 does not go into 54. 5 does not go into 54. 6, however, does. 6 times 9. 7 does not go into 54, and 8 does not go into 54. So these are all my factors. Now we're going to find common factors. Then from here we can find the greatest common factor, or the GCF. So I can see that 6, my GCF is 6. Whoops. GCF is 6. So I'm going to divide my numerator by 6 and my denominator by 6. 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. 54 divided by 6 gives me 9. So 2 ninths would be this fraction in simplest terms. Now if I just started dividing by 2, because I picked a number because that was simple, I would get 6 27ths, which is not in simplest terms. I would have to do another step. So find the GCF first always, and then divide both numerator and denominator by the GCF. Now what I want you to do is complete this problem at your seats all by yourself. When you're finished, you can press play, and I'll have the answer for you. So pause this video now. Okay, your answer should be 3 fifths. You can see I found the greatest common factor, first of all, which was 5, and then I divided both numerator and denominator by 5, giving me 3 fifths. And this is the final problem of the video. I want you to do 20 thirtieths all by yourself at your seats, and when you're finished, you can press play, and I have the answers for you. I have the answer for you, so pause the video now. Okay, you can see that my answer is 2 thirds. Okay, I found the greatest common factor of 20 and 30, which was 10. I divided by 10. I divided the numerator and denominator by 10, giving me the answer of 2 thirds. So this is how you reduce fractions to simplest terms. And it is important that you always find the greatest common factor first, and then from there divide both numerator and denominator by the GCF. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.